To answer the question this title proposes it might not be the same for everybody. However, one thing most people can agree upon is British game developers Rare's new game Sea of Thieves is quite popular at the time of recording this video, with just its closed beta having over 300,000 people and only growing with its full release back on March 20th. Now the question has to be asked, is it worth all the hype? Is it worth the $60 price tag? Does this game make you feel like a badass pirate immersing you into its world? Well, yes and no. What I mean by that is for the first 4-5 to five hours, at least for me personally, I was hooked. Hell, by the first 30 minutes I was talking like a pirate and roleplaying things out on my ship. Then again I am a huge nerd who takes any chance I can get to roleplay, but still. And this was all just when I played by myself. When I finally got one of my friends to play with me, it was even more fun just sticking around on the pirate ship and looking for buried treasure together. Don't you? Well, first of all, there was a ship in the distance shooting. I don't know if it's ours or not. Oh, Second of all, ours. I'm the king of the dick shark. That is amazing. <laughs> Never lose that nickname. When the game starts, it doesn't hold your hand. It just plops you into its world and lets you do as you please, which is something that I really like in a game. When games have the infamous tutorial level, especially when it's a game that encourages exploration or has a huge map, it just feels off. Even my favorite game of all time, Skyrim, has this problem. While it does have a good story to go with its tutorial, I can only enjoy it so many times, and it takes me around 5-10 to 10 minutes to even get through. Now while it may sound like I'm nitpicking, and I kind of am to be honest, I still love the game, but I just wish I could jump into a new game and go wherever I want and do whatever I want at the very start. Like I said, this is something Sea of Thieves does right. You can jump straight in and go right to your ship. No quest where you must gather materials to fix slash build it to set sail, or you must talk to this person to buy a ship. Nope, it's just boom, here's your ship, here's the world, do whatever you want. I feel like one reason developers shy away from doing this is because they're worried that we won't go down the path they want us to, whether it be the main quest, teach us the game mechanics, or something else. But a lot of people picking up this game know how basic mechanics work and will quickly figure out what the main quest is. Giving them the freedom to do whatever they want and not hold their hand makes the game that much more immersive. However, that doesn't mean Sea of Thieves is a perfect game. Far from it, actually. As of the time of recording this video, it only has a 3.5 star review on the Microsoft Store. So why is that? Well, we don't need to look far for the answer. Let's start with the quest system in Sea of Thieves. When you break it down, there are three quest types offered by three different factions. First up, we have the Gold Hoarders, who give you a quest to go to a randomly selected island on the map, dig up some buried treasure, and then sell it back to them for coins. I'm gonna get this first try. It's rock, I'm on. Okay, that wasn't first time, that doesn't count. Next is the Merchant Alliance, which tells you to go find a specific item like chickens, gunpowder, pig, etc. Then deliver to a specific island by a specific time slash date, and then you'll receive coins. Finally, there is the Order of Souls, which gives you a specific enemy to fight on a random island, and then once you defeat them, you're to bring their skulls back as a trophy, and you'll receive coins. Now, out of all these factions, the one I've done the least is actually the Order of Souls, Mainly because I've been playing alone a lot and the enemies you're tasked with killing are significantly harder than the normal enemies you encounter and probably would be easier with the team. Now, when it comes to making enemies harder to help encourage team play, I have nothing wrong with that. I think it's a good idea, actually. However, I do have a problem with the weapons you use, but we'll come back to that. The Merchant Alliance seems fun at first glance, but it's actually just more tedious work than anything. You're never told or given any hints to where your items might be, and since they can be quite specific, like two white feathered chickens for example, it can take a while to find. So much to the point that I was always running out of time. So the last faction, the Gold Hoarders, are the one that I've done the most for, naturally. So far as to reaching level 12 with them, while only being 4 with Merchants and 2 with the Order of Souls. The problem I have with Gold Hoarders, and to a lesser extent the rest of the factions, is that I'm making the same amount of coin at level 12 that I was making at level 2. You see, how it works is there are different chest types that you can find that yield different money. With Castaway being the lowest yielding only a few hundred coins, all the way to the Chest of Sorrow which yields about 1500 coins. So I figured for the first few levels I'll be stuck getting quests that have me searching for Castaway chests, but when I get to level 10, then, then I'll start receiving better missions with better chests. However, this really didn't seem to be the case. I'm still receiving the same Castaway chest missions with getting a better chest one out of every 10 missions maybe? But I, I hear what you might be saying. Well, maybe you just need to be a higher level than 12 to prove your point. Maybe you're right, maybe I just need to grind more to get the better missions. But do I even want to do that? When most of your main quests have the sole intent of making money, you need to make sure money actually means something. What are you spending it on? What are you saving it for? And finally, when you do spend it, are you going to feel satisfied with what you got? As of right now, the only thing you can buy in Sea of Thieves are cosmetics. Even the weapons, which I thought might help me more for fighting against the contracts the Order of Souls gave me. But they're all just skins, basically. Now, I understand why this was done. The game is all online, so if one person brand new jumped into the server, you'd want them to be on equal ground as far as weapons and ships go for PvP against someone who's been playing the game for a long time. I hate to tell you this, but I'm pretty sure our ship is a goner. No, 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 I see our ship. 
they're shooting at it. But that seems like such a price to pay in order to keep things fair. So what if instead we rework the PvP system? What if we made it like another MMORPG? For example, World of Warcraft has its main servers, which is for questing, leveling, etc., but it also has separate PvP servers, which balances between levels. So what if Sea of Thieves had something like this? Well, for starters, there could be much more room for expansion on the game while still being fair. Let's start with the ships. Imagine starting out with a small, basic ship, but over time you could spend money to build it the way you wish. Creating a small but speedy ship with the best sails to help you get from place to place as fast as possible. Or building a giant warship with two rows of cannons and strong hull armor to help you raid the various strongholds in the game. And the same applies for weapons too. Sure, you could have different and stronger weapons altogether that you could buy, but maybe also having cheap separate parts for your weapons that slowly make it more powerful over time, like a scope for your gun, for example, or a better grip for your sword. This could really help encourage variety in teams. Maybe one person has a powerful sniper slash gun that sits in the crow's nest, while someone else has a powerful admiral's cutlass that's on the ground. And this is just going into the basics without talking about things like skill trees that could give even more perks, but I know that's not everyone's thing, so I'll save that for another video. Another thing I think could be added is more variety in the quests. Right now all the quests are basically the same thing with just different islands to go to every time. And while it is fun for the first few hours or so, it will quickly become repetitive. Which is a shame because Sea of Thieves has a fantastic world with many different places to explore that could be used for a variety of quests. For example, maybe one quest you get from the Order of Souls when you reach a certain level isn't to defeat a skeleton, but instead hunt down a rogue pirate that betrayed the Order and formed a separate pirate gang that you now must take down. Once you arrive at the island, you could have an epic ship battle with his gang that then leads into a sword fight on the beach with you and his personal crew. And before you finish him off, he tells you that he betrayed the order because he thought they were corrupt and wants to take them down. So then you have a choice to make. Spare him and join his pirate gang to help take down the Order of Souls, or finish him and his gang off to stay loyal to the order. This is just one of so many other examples that I could think of, and it adds so much more to the story and adventure in this world. Suddenly you don't feel like you're running errands anymore, but instead carving out your own path to become a legendary pirate name. But at the end of the day, that is just my opinion. If you think differently, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear how you think this game could be improved, or if you think it's perfect as is. All in all, I really do like Sea of Thieves. I wouldn't really say it's worth the $60 price tag, maybe trying the free trial with the Xbox Game Pass on the Microsoft Store, and then decide for yourself. It's a good game, and if expanded and updated correctly, it has the potential to be a great game for years to come. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, as you can tell I'm trying something new on the channel, so if you want to see me review more games or want me to talk about specific things in games, let me know in the comments. If you want to help support the channel and help me make more of this content, please consider donating to my Patreon. I've got some decent stuff set up over there, so go check it out. But other than that, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.